Hey folks, thanks for joining us again on the Monday Mindshare. Uh, awesome this week to have Griffin Javorski with us uh, out of Iowa. Thanks for joining us, bud. Yeah, glad to be here. Yeah, that's great. And you know, for those of you uh, in the ambassador team, you've probably seen uh, his results through the years. It's been an intense year for sure. But hey, Griffin, why don't you just walk us through your background now as a tri coach and obviously as a uh, collegiate runner uh, at, at a high school runner? Yeah. So I I got into triathlon after um, after running in college. Um, but I guess to backtrack, uh, high school. You know, it was fairly decent running wise. My mom tried to get me into swimming and just absolutely hated it, um, but was a fairly, fairly decent runner and then ran collegiately uh, for Auburn University and then had a little bit of eligibility left just from a whole host of injuries there. Um, so transferred to Drake University, which is in Des Moines, Iowa um, for my fifth, fifth year while I got a master's and then Met up with a tri coach here, started getting into triathlon, and then he left a few years ago to go coach collegiately um, at Luther College. And so I kind of was getting into coaching myself then and uh, started kind of taking over a, a lot of his athletes. My mom was doing uh, Ironman. She's a type 1 diabetic and has had multiple wow. back surgeries. And so I was kind of looking at her training thinking, man, we, we probably need to be a little bit more specific than uh, what you're doing right now. So I uh, kind of started coaching her and, and yeah, really got into the coaching side of things. That's cool. That's great. And uh, I assume that's building out. There just seems to be a growing demand for good coaches across the country. Yeah, for sure. And then last year we had our first uh, – half Ironman in Des Moines and then this year we have our first full Ironman they still haven't shown us what the course looks like or anything like that but <laughs> that's coming up on June 12th so that'll be really exciting well that's great yeah and I hope you're getting some off-season time now and uh so folks we're going to talk through just uh Griffin's uh you know season that was if you will and some of the results there and I'm actually going to go back into 20 19 and 2018 17 some of the results you had there and then we'll contrast that to 2021 um, and then we'll get into some of your, you know, your best races this past year. Obviously, 2020 was out for most people. And uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about your off-season plans and uh, what you got planning until you get into spring and summer again for next year. Yeah, okay, so sure. I was looking at some of your data, um, and it looks like, and you can correct me if, if I'm wrong here, but prior to this year, it looked like you were you had a 421 on the board. I think at Chattanooga twice. In fact, identical, identical, <laughs> identical times. to the yeah. second. It was it was crazy. I didn't even <laughs> realize that until like a few weeks later. Yeah, I was looking at the data. So there must be an error there. But no, it's 421 57 in 2017. Uh, sorry, 2019 and 2018. And then from what I could see, Wisconsin in 2017, you uh, put 1043 for a full uh, on the board. And um, that was, yeah, now uh, a few years back. So big race season. Why don't you just talk us all through the, the list of races? We first got together, of course, down in Panama City Beach there in May. Yeah. But uh, you had a lot of racing coming up after that. I, I did. And I was one of the few people that got to race uh, at the tail end of, of 2020. Um, my, like I said, my parents are, are live in Florida. And so... Daytona beach is not, not that far away. And so yeah. I was signed up for the, the Florida 70.3 that had gotten pushed back to that. It got canceled. Um, but Daytona was, you know, just around the corner for my parents. So I signed up for that like the week before and went and did that. Um, and that's, that's where my PB is now. So I don't okay. you know. What I, was, was that the, by I, the way? What was uh, it? Four, four twenty. Oh gosh, 420.03. I need to go look at okay. the exact down to the second, but it was you know, just like a hair over 420. Um, awesome. But yeah, I was using like my dad's bike because my bike got damaged. And so we were having <laughs> Canyon replace it and all that. So it was kind of a crazy, just happy to be out there racing. Um, and that was like, that was my first race that I was using all of the S Fuels products pretty much exclusively. Um, and so it, it went really well. And I was super happy about that. Um, and then uh, you know, the rest of 2021 was, was kind of crazy. Uh, I had just kind of kept signing up for races in 2020 thinking like, oh, this pandemic will end soon. Yeah, like everyone right. else thought. Right. And so I just kept, I kept signing up for stuff. Uh, and so eventually everything was like, you know, just pushed back to the next year. And so I had Florida 70.3, 
Um, Panama City Beach, 70.3. And then Chattanooga, 70.3 a week after that. And that's then right. that's right. I remember that. Yeah. And then yeah. Des Moines, 70.3, which got the, it was lightning in the morning. And so it got shortened to like a 50.6 or something right. like that. Um, right. And then uh, Ironman Lake Placid. So that was a lot of attempts at racing. That's yeah. a lot of racing. So one week after 70.3, you do another 70.3. How do, how do you stack up? I mean, what, what's most noticeable to you? It's legs or it's mental or uh, cardio? Yeah. What, what's working? Uh, I, I was like the most excited about that. And I actually think that like it wasn't my best time in Chattanooga, but it was probably the best performance that I had. Um, it was just like at the end of the run, I could tell that there is just no way that I could physically – run any faster and then biking wise it was only like 10 watts lower than than i did in panama city um the week before but i just i had nothing else like if, yeah, if someone yeah. had tried to say you know go sprint um there was no nothing over like 250 watts was gonna happen so <laughs> yeah your best race for 2021 which what would you which one was it you think uh, you know, I'm going to say Chattanooga 70.3, like the week after uh, Panama city was like the best performance wise. Um, I got a, you know, slot at the 70.3 world championships there. Um, I had to defer that or decline that because yeah. that was same weekend that my wife had a baby. So Your baby. That Congratulations. Was, Being a father you. and a coach and a triathlete at the same time. That's a juggle. It is a juggle. Yeah. So I figured that, you know, that's, that's probably where the priority should be. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, no, I think, I think Chattanooga was, was the best race that I had um, in terms of just putting a really solid performance right. together, even, even with a lot of, you know, fatigue in the body. Right. No, for sure. So what just guide us through for you uh, coming into a 70.3, what's a typical weekly workload look like for you? in you know swim and bike run what, what are you doing in the pool on the bike and uh, on the roads yeah so i'd say workload that week is probably somewhere around 10 hours of, of volume um for me i'm usually doing um i i've done all the like endure iq stuff that dan plus has put together so i really like like the three by mile three by five minute uh stuff on on the run on yeah. tuesday just to kind of sharpen, sharpen the legs, feel, feel nice and, uh, fresh going in. Um, and then kind of like a three by three minute, uh, and then three by one minute bike workout on the Thursday, uh, before, uh, and usually both of those kind of end up being an hour total of volume, a couple 30 minute runs. Um, and then swimming wise, uh, this year was kind of interesting cause you know, we're having a baby and all that. And so I was and pandemic stuff. So I was yeah. doing all these races, but also trying to save money. So I didn't have a pool membership for a really long time. Right. So I was doing some swimming, but it was like a little bit of open water swims. Um, I think, you know, for the most part, I, I did have a pool membership in like the latter half of the year. Um, and so I'll, I'll do two to 3000 yards four times a week. Um, so I don't really drop the swim volume down all that much just because I, it never gets up there uh, for me. I mean, a 4,000 yard swim for me is, is still I would consider that long. Yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah. Okay. And in like uh, building as you build towards a 70.3, what's a big week uh, for you? Like to push out a, you know, 420, 430, what's uh, a big week volume wise for you? Yeah. I, I'd say the most I've ever done is 21 uh, hours in a week. Hours. And then, um, you know, you usually, if I, if I try to sustain anywhere from 19 to 21, for more than one or two weeks in a row, I start getting really fatigued. I start having, even if my nutrition and all that, like sleep is, is up there. Um, it's hard to sustain that. Yeah, uh, I like yeah. to do a couple key big workouts. Um, yeah. and then for the most part, I'd say, you know, somewhere between 15 and 17 hours, I feel really, really good. Um, and, and can sustain that for, several weeks at a time talking about um <clears throat> dan plus sessions i know now he's running his uh zwift um bike sessions u.s saturday morning est and i think there's like you know the la the first three weeks there was 100 now there's 170 people in that uh peloton joining uh dan and aaron and the team so yeah it's a great workout saturday mornings 8 a.m est um, what's a long ride for you typically leading into a full, uh, Ironman? Like what are the long bike sessions typically, uh, mean for you? 
Yeah, I, I, I'll do a couple, like, I'll do a handful of century rides, um, like two or three, but usually they're about four hours. Um, and again, kind of deferring back to, to Dan Plews, a lot of like four by 30 minute intervals where you're going slightly above Ironman effort. Um, and that way you're kind of getting the bang for your buck in a, a sh- shorter amount of time. It's, you know, especially as someone that's trying to juggle family and yeah. business and all that other stuff, being on the bike for eight hours at a time, really kind of a, a demanding thing. So, um, yeah, I, for the most part, I, I do kind of cycles where I'll have a couple four hour work, uh, or four hour long rides where I'll get off the bike and run for another 30 minutes or something like that, um, Got it. where there's four by 30 minutes or four by 20 minutes included. That's slightly over Ironman effort. Um, and then, uh, I'll once a month or once every four weeks, I'll include like a, a f- five to six hour ride. Um, and usually that's kind of with, with, some of my athletes that are training, like last year I had uh, someone training for Ironman Chattanooga 70 or not 70.3 Ironman Chattanooga or Ironman Wisconsin. Okay. I'll just kind of hop in with them. And uh, <clears throat> I know your, uh, your 5k times were like sub 15, I think close to 14 and a few times there, you were mentioning earlier. Um, I know even at Panama city, you got off the bike and put down a pretty solid run. Um What's your, uh, what's your best half, uh, half Ironman time? Do you, oh, sorry. Half, um, marathon time, uh, Griffin. Yeah. So it's interesting. My, my best half marathon time and my best like 70.3 time aren't that far away. Yeah. Um, right. just, just cause I specialized in kind of 5k, 10k stuff in college. Okay. Um, so, but one, one fourteen forty nine, wow. I okay. believe is, is the best half that I've done. Um, and that was just after college and, you know, had taken a couple months off and just kind of hopped in a random race. Um, <laughs> so I'd like to kind of work on that this, this next year and get that down a little bit more. Cause my best, my best 70.3 time, um, for the run split was like one sixteen, right? just over one sixteen at, uh, at Daytona beach last year. So like, wow. that's, it shouldn't be that close. It can be kind of close, but it shouldn't be, you know, that's, one minute that's away. That's fast. That's a good time, man. That's great. <clears throat> and um, so before we jump into nutrition um, next year, it sounds like, did your deferral for the worlds go to 2022? Is that what you're planning on? No, I don't even think, I don't think you can defer to worlds is, is my understanding. So I just said, I can't go. Okay. Um, yeah. But I, Oh, my kind of dream goal was to get to New Zealand. That was, that was right. the eventual, I really wanted to, I was like, oh, I don't need to go to France or I don't need to go to, you know, Utah. <laughs> Utah. <laughs> I, like I, I'd rather go to New Zealand and that keeps getting pushed back to like, what is it? 2023 right. or four 2023, now? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. I, so nutrition before, um, you know, we caught up working together, um, and now you're reflecting on, I guess, a, a solid season on a more low carb principled training and racing um, paradigm. Like what's the noticeable things for you that pop, pop out? If you're talking to your own athletes, what are you kind of guiding them on? What are you finding? Yeah. Um, I'd say for me, the, the two biggest things is I have been someone that struggled with gut issues for a long time, even going back into, um, even going back into like high school, college running. Um, and that's because, you know, as a runner, especially you're just pushed, eat, goo this like super yeah. high carb. Everything. We were all there. And, Absolutely. And, yeah. And so like, I, that's what I thought I had to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. and eventually like you, you just get to the point where you're so reliant on that, even for short stuff that, I don't know. It just, I was having a lot of gut issues, especially if I did any sort of like tempo run or long run, like the rest of the day, my gut would just be destroyed. Um, and so I, I really had almost no gut issues this past year. I can't think of a single workout or, or race where that was, uh, the, a problem. Um, and then the other big thing is just kind of energy management throughout the day. Like I never, I, I got fatigued kind of at the end of the summer. Um, and that was more so due to life circumstances, just cause yeah. you know, if I tried to walk through the, all the training and then what else I was doing on top of that as a, a business lot. owner and personal trainer was like, wow, you, what do you, 
like no duh, you're, you're exhausted. Uh, but from a, a training perspective, I, I hit every single workout. Like there was nothing, no point where I felt like, Oh yeah, I, I don't have enough energy to do this. Um, and so that was, uh, that was really, really cool just to be able to go day after day and feel like, Hey, there's no reason that I can't go out there for another four hours. Like every day just felt really strong. That's good. Good, good. So off seasons here, um, I'm sure it's cold or cooler where you are. It's certainly starting to cool down here on the East. Um, what, uh, you know, obviously you're dialing down the volume um, for yourself personally and for your athletes, what does off season typically uh, entail or what are you planning specifically this year? Yeah. So for myself, I've kind of gotten back into, into running. Um, next year, I'm going to try to run the, the Drake Relays 5K um, and get back on the track and, and see how I, how, you know, 10 years later, can I still run as fast as I did when I was in college? <laughs> um, and then uh, for my athletes, uh, you know, a lot of them like to take a, a nice long break uh, after yeah. their summer season. And so it's kind of getting everyone rallied around the same same common goal. So a lot of us are kind of working on, working on FTP right now. And so I, you know, took what I know from Dan and and what I've learned from other people and kind of put together like our own FTP challenge that we're all doing the same workouts and we're all trying, you know, testing on the same day. Um, and so that, that second test to see if we've, you know, regained any of that fitness is coming up on December, like 17th or 18th. And so that'll be kind of fun. And then we'll have like a group get together after that. Sounds good. Well, we'll have to get you uh, some primed uh, to caffeinate your 5K uh, track attempt there. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I've been I've been using it. I, I love it. It's uh, the watermelon is delicious. And I, <laughs> I use it for like all the high intensity stuff, yeah. uh, especially in the morning. You know, these days sleep is a is not something that I'm getting a lot of. Um, and so if I can have a little bit of extra energy in the morning, it's it's good. That's cool. So uh, but on that point though, off season nutrition wise, is there anything you would typically do different or now looking to do different with uh, coming off a, a big season um, and low carb, high fat, you know, modified, if you will, if you, as you think about an off season, is it any different or any tune refinements you make? Yeah, I not really. Um, right now life is just kind of crazy. And so we've kind of just been into survival mode for the last, you know, eight, nine weeks. Um, and and now we're starting to get in a groove of things. And so, uh, at first it was like, okay, we'll eat whatever anyone wants to bring us like, or we can order to the house. Right. Um, and now, now it's starting to get a little bit more back into control, you know, a regular rhythm of, of training. And so I'll, I'll kind of get back on, you know, the, the things that I was doing and, and knowing really well last year. Cause uh, um, Thanksgiving but, and Christmas really helped that process too, of course. Right. Yeah, for sure. And <laughs> especially Thanksgiving at my house, it's, it's kind of interesting. I'm like, try to be low carb as, as much as I can. Um, I definitely have a sweet tooth, uh, but my dad's, um, my dad got diagnosed with Alzheimer's a few, few years ago. And so he's like purely Mediterranean diet. Cause that's what the doctor told him. Okay. And then my mom is vegetarian for the most part. And then my sister's vegan. And so like all of us are all different things. What do we all eat? Like we all kind of have to fend for ourselves and my wife yeah. doesn't care, you know? <laughs> so it's just, uh, yeah, it's an interesting mix. For yeah, sure. for sure. Well, we, as you know, we came out with a breakfast product through the year and, uh, for a lot of athletes, breakfast is a challenging thing as they, you know, shift off typical high cereal breakfast uh, in the morning. Um, what about for you? What's typically breakfast mean for, for you? Yeah, I, I usually kind of do um, eggs. It was kind of my go-to. Um, but every now and again, like you just have enough eggs and like the last thing you want is another egg. <laughs> and egg. so the, the Keto 3 has been, been awesome just to add that in. Um, a lot of times I'll add it into like small amounts of oatmeal or like a smoothie, right. if, uh, you know, something where, uh, um, you know, I'm having a little bit of carbs with that, but it kind of helps sustain that energy source for a longer period of time and, and drop down that insulin response. And for a while, I don't have one on right now. I was uh, playing around with like a insulin 
um, or a blood glucose monitor. Um, and, and it was cool to see like the effects or lack of effects when I would add, you know, the keto three in, or I would use the, the train product. It was like flat line across the board. And then I'd, you know, be in a pinch and need to grab something else and have a huge spike. spike. So that was, that was kind of, <laughs> kind of fun to see. Yeah, actually, Dan was sending us some data through the week of using train plus prime together and just showing flatline impact on uh, blood sugars, which um, we actually had an athlete the other day, runner, um, recently diagnosed type 2 diabetic. And um, he, he said he had to stop his running because of all the fuels. And then he, he came across us and he's running again. So that was, you know, That's certainly cool. those types of stories are really... Um, are uh, you know encouraging to us at s fuels and um yeah no we're, we're hearing more of those cases where they're wearing the continuous glucose monitors and seeing that kind of result so it's interesting yeah so what's uh what's plans for next year race wise uh what is the list yeah so i tried to learn my lesson at least um from doing too many races but <laughs> um i i signed up for iron man like placid because that I, I was just to long story short it, I was doing, you know, my training sessions in the morning and then I coach a high school girls cross country team. So I would kind of do part of their session and make sure they're doing everything right. And then I also run, um, youth running camps. Uh, and so wow. I was basically running from like five o'clock in the morning, you know, and those two other things get slower and slower throughout the day, but it's still just time on your feet. Yeah. I was basically felt like I was running from like five o'clock in the morning until like 10 30 in the morning and just wow. had no energy at like yeah. placid and, and didn't, uh, didn't finish, which left a, a bad taste in my mouth. Um, and so sign up for that again, uh, going to go back there with some vengeance because after seeing the course and, and having a PR swim there, uh, it's a course that I know I can do really well at. Um, and then of course they added Ironman Des Moines, which is like six weeks before that. And I went back and forth on, you know, do I focus on one or do I do both? Um, and the Des Moines race, like we only got the contract to my knowledge for three years. And so I figured we might not ever have a hometown right. Ironman again. Like yeah. I got, I gotta be out there. I gotta be part of that. That's so cool. Yeah, those those are the two two tries that I got, and then I'll try to step on the track in uh, in late April and and see right. if I can run sub fifteen again. But um, yeah, I gotta I gotta we'll see if I can do both of those two things. The Ironmans are the priority. If I happen to be in really good run shape, it'll be an added bonus. Yeah, no, we'll be uh, watching that with uh, interest, and we'll make sure that we post out to the team how you do there and. Hey, big thanks for 2021. It's been a pleasure working with you and watching uh, the results come in. It was a huge year, not just uh, on the in the races, but uh, off the courses, of course, with your family. And congrats again on uh, yeah, appreciate the it there. And uh, it's great to talk to you, Griffin. Have a have a great yeah. Christmas in regards to the family. Yep, thanks. You too. All right, buddy. Thanks again. To bye. Thanks.